I am pleased to speak to you today on the subject of food safety and quality, which is one of the themes organized under the Food Act on 2021. Food quality has been the subject of discussion for many years, and food safety became an important subject after the World Trade Organization started supporting trade food trade internationally. In this effort, about 40 years back, the food safety, which was earlier considered as part of food quality, became a separate entity, a separate requirement with higher emphasis on food safety, quality. Now what I'm going to tell you is, how do we distinguish between food safety and food quality? When you go to the supermarket, when you want to buy some fruits, we look at the color, the shape, the fullness of the fruit, or we might even take a fruit like avocado here, and try to find certain characters which we are familiar with, which we associate with quality. At the same time, when we want to buy a packeted material, a packet, we look at the label. The label indicates to us what is inside the packet, in the form of nutritional facts, as well as a list of ingredients. Now, all these represent quality of a food which we look at and which we refer when we are buying the food. When it comes to safety, we have situations where we have formerly in fish, where we have hydrogen peroxide in milk, where we are talking quite a lot about aflatoxins in coconut oil, and we were talking a lot about cadmium in fertilizer that was affected in the people who were consuming food through the rice or the water. Now all these refers to food safety and we cannot see the food safety. The food safety will only be judged by analysis, by testing, by expending a lot of money to do a test and try to find whether something is present in the food. Now these things which are present in the food which affects safety are really present in very, very small amounts. They may be micrograms, they may be nanograms, or we may describe them as parts per million or parts per million. So I want to explain in the amount of food safety, which is the subject. Now I am Upali Samaradeva, Emeritus Professor in Food Science and Technology, talking to you with a lot of experience in the area of food safety working in countries. Now, something we need to understand is food safety is very relevant to our health on one side, and also it is very relevant to the export food industry uh, on the other side. We have problems right now with our exports getting rejected due to food safety issues and also of the imports creating problems within the country due to food safety issues. Now, when it comes to food safety, what is important? Important for the academics, important for the industry, important for those who are engaged in research and engaged in learning, the students, is we need to learn how to understand food safety proactively, not by doing a post-mortem and saying there is this product, this uh, compound, this component, it is not safe in the food, but thinking ahead and understanding what we can do and how we can avoid this. Now, when it comes to the issue that we are in hand right now, the question of aflatoxins in coconut oil, the University of Pera then started working on this in 1970s, early 1970s, and they continue to do the work. So we had a whole heap of data, we had a lot of actions taken, we had a lot of control measures brought about within the country to ensure that the coconut oil produced in the country are safe. 
But unfortunately, we could say the cannot say the same thing about what is imported. So we ran into problems with the imported products. So therefore, it is very, very important for us to understand what can happen in the future. That could be done only by looking at what's happening elsewhere. What products are getting rejected? What issues are coming up in other countries? And thinking loud as to how we would address our problems. Say, for example, about a year back, some of our biscuits were rejected, saying that there's a certain compound produced during purification of palm But we don't know whether the same compound is present in presentation of coconut. So we are, we are, there's opportunity now for us to be proactive and find whether there's a problem with that thing. So that is how research goes. So in this theme, food safety and quality, where you all are going to make presentations, I expect all to think forward, think for the future, and try to say what may what will happen to us, how we can work out the problems, and what actions we should take. So it's very hard to see that students of the city of Peradeniya has organized this activity, and we are going to have a lot of discussion I believe, on this subject. Now, doing research in food safety is one important aspect. We may do the research and we may publish it. But there is another aspect we need to think about. When I am doing the research, I have my own ideas and I present to the audience what I think of and how I think of the problem. But in the audience, there may be people who look at it from a different angle, who wants to bring their own thinking and put the ideas together, maybe from the industry maybe another scientist, so that we can refine our ideas, we can work out new methods, new ways of handling food safety problems. So it's a question of our working together, our working to see that the food safety issues are addressed. So today, and the meeting that we are going to plan, that we are planning and that we are going to have, should bring out certain aspects of food safety, the problems, the issues and how to sort them out. Now that can only happen only if we are reading about what's happening abroad, only if we are talking about what's happening abroad and we are interested in improving ourselves in the food safety situation. So it has a research component, it has a component of understanding, it's a component of marketing, it has a component of export. So we as students, as academics, as industrialists, as researchers, have to get together and discuss the issues and understand what is happening and what problems should be solved in our country. So it's a big issue right now because our regulatory system is quite different from the regulatory system accepted and used in the world. For example, the issue is our regulations are described as Sri Lankan food regulations and Sri Lankan food regulations are known well to Sri Lankans and we are proud of it. But that is not going to help us because our food safety regulations are far behind what is a practice in the world. We need to understand this aspect. For example, if you go to a supermarket, and look at the labels of all the products in, of, of products of Sri Lankan origin as well as imported products and compare the labeling in those products against the Sri Lankan standards and against the international standards like COVID standards, then you will see there's a big difference. For example, we don't have any concern about allergens in our food. We have no regulations on allergens in our food. But the whole world looks at food to find where there are allergens and we are expected to label them. To label them all. And that's what happened. So our concern on food safety 
when it comes to your focus, far, far below the international standards. So it's up to you, up to the industry, up to everybody is, uh, getting interested in this activity to get together and find what we should do. Another very good example is our regulations regarding the food colors and the foods are quite different from the regulations abroad. So on one side, we cannot export foods to foreign countries. On the other side, we cannot import food, uh, food from foreign countries because of these disparities in the regulation. So to have a good food safety system, to be running in line with the food industry in the world, to be competitive, then we need to adopt international standards such as codex standards into our system. And then we should start looking at the food regulations from that angle and not from any other angle. If you start doing that, the whole country will have one set of regulations, one set of limits, and there are no misunderstandings here. Today, there are different limits, different tolerance limits, which are creating problems, which are questioned by the layman as to what we are going to do, what is the truth, and what we should do. So in a situation of food safety, we need to start thinking about all these aspects. And also we need to understand that testing the end product for safety is a very, very extensive thing. To test a single sample of food for aflatoxin, it costs about 22,000 rupees. But we cannot take decisions by analyzing one sample. We may have analyzed 100 samples. So you can imagine the cost of analysis which is affecting our exports. On the other side, there are measures that could be taken pretty early at the point of agricultural production, at the point of handling agricultural produce, at the point of uh, processing where we expect good manufacturing practices to come in, where we expect hazard analysis critical control point system to be applied and food safety measures is done. If we do that, that is a preventive way. That's a preventive part. So if we do that, we are preventing the problems rather than trying to do post mortems after the problem has affected. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to do, what I expect you all to think about is in this Food Tech Town 21, we need to think about how we are going to address food quality and how we are going to address food safety. And food safety becomes number one. So, we need to think about how we are going to address food safety through our research, through our interactions, through our discussion, and educate the people. When the public are not educated well about food safety issues, they tend to make different interpretations and that affects the whole system, the industry as well as the management of the country. So we need to understand that there are no situations where there is a zero value for a certain food safety issue in the industry. There is nothing called zero value. The zero value cannot be achieved because the instruments decide what level can we check the food safety? To what lowest level can we check the food safety? And that becomes the important level for us to decide. So somebody going out and say there is this material, this harmful substance in the food is not going to help us. We need to understand, we need to work towards that the limits are these. How are we going to keep the amount of those undesirable substances below the limit? because we cannot have a zero limit for any of those substances because they get into the food naturally or we may be adding those things to the food. So the theme today on food safety and policy quality brings you the very important aspects to you to discuss, to consider. That is how we can bring about food safety in our processing. What are the issues that we are facing today? and that we will face for the next 20 years in food safety. So that needs a lot of interactions, a lot of discussions by the students especially, because students are the people who are learning, they are the people who are working for the future, and they are the people who are going to take up 
the responsibility is in five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, like that. So my trick is therefore to make use of this opportunity, put tech on twenty one, discuss about food safety and quality in relation to what can happen in the future by looking at what is happening elsewhere and applying it to Sri Lanka and asking the question, could it happen in Sri Lanka? And if it could happen, how are we going to avoid it? How are we going to prevent this situation? What action should be taken? The research, the thinking, the attitudes should be geared towards that. Thank you very much.